This video is an overview of Volkswagen Evaporative Emission System. Remember to work safe and work smart. Work in a well-ventilated area, protect yourself from injury at all times, and attempt all work at your own risk. Before beginning, consult your owner's manual or the appropriate repair manual for your vehicle. Evaporative emission systems are nothing new. As airborne pollution levels began to rise in the 60s and 70s, automobile manufacturers and governments realized a need to control the amount of emissions escaping into the atmosphere. When unburned hydrocarbon particles are exposed to sunlight, a chemical reaction occurs, creating low-level ozone. Low-level ozone is the primary reason for smog and is linked to respiratory disorders. In order to trap this fuel vapor from escaping into the atmosphere, evaporative emissions or EVAP systems were created. The objectives of this course are to explain the importance of the evaporative emissions and onboard refueling and vapor recovery systems, explain the operation of the evaporative emissions system, explain the operation of the leak detection pump, explain the evaporative emissions system testing guidelines and explain the operation of the onboard refueling and vapor recovery system. Let's take a look at the evaporative emissions or EVAP system. The primary function of the EVAP system is to trap fuel vapor created by the fuel in the fuel tank. In order to trap this vapor, a sealed system was created that routes fuel vapor from the fuel tank to the intake manifold to be burned during normal combustion. A recent addition to the EVAP system is the leak detection pump, or LDP. The LDP was added to ensure integrity of the EVAP system as required by Onboard Diagnostics II regulations. When a leak is detected, the malfunction indicator lamp, or MIL, will illuminate, warning the driver that something is wrong with the vehicle. Another recent addition to the EVAP system is onboard refueling and vapor recovery, or ORVR system. Even though the EVAP system was performing its function well, it had no capability to control the hydrocarbons escaping during refueling. The vapor return systems installed on gas pump nozzles have relatively little effect on the amount of vapor escaping. As a result, the ORVR system was created to minimize the hydrocarbons released during refueling. During ORVR operation, fuel vapor is stored in the EVAP canister. This vapor is later routed to the engine to be burned. The EVAP and ORVR systems have been very successful in the containment of hydrocarbon emissions. Now that you know the subjects that are going to be covered in this informational video, let's take a more detailed look at exactly how the EVAP system works. The EVAP system has been designed to stop hydrocarbons from escaping from the fuel tank into the atmosphere. To see how this is accomplished, let's first take a look at the components in the system. The fuel cap, the fuel tank, the breather or expansion bottle, the breather valve, the rollover valve, the vent lines, the EVAP canister, and the EVAP canister purge regulator valve. These components all work together with the ECM to prevent the fuel vapor from escaping into the atmosphere and route it to the intake manifold to be burned when the engine is running. It's actually not a complex system. Let's take a look at how the components work. Either through heat or agitation, fuel vapor builds up inside of the fuel tank. This vapor cannot escape through the fuel cap, except under extreme pressure circumstances, so it is collected in the breather bottle and routed through the breather valve. The function of the breather valve is to close the top of the breather bottle during refueling. 
This traps air in the breather bottle so that there is an expansion space for the fuel vapor. The breather valve is opened when the fuel filler cap is reinstalled on the filler neck. It is important that the correct filler cap is used. Some aftermarket caps will not extend far enough into the filler neck to open the breather valve. In this case, the vent line will not be opened and as the fuel is drawn from the tank, a vacuum is created. This can cause the tank to collapse. After the vapor has been routed through the breather valve, it is passed on to the rollover valve. The rollover valve functions as a safety valve in case the vehicle should roll over. If the vehicle rolled over, liquid fuel would be able to pass through the vent lines and through to the EVAP canister vent. The rollover valve is placed in the vent line to keep this from happening. Fuel vapor is passed through the rollover valve to the vent lines and to the EVAP canister. Fuel tank pressure is allowed to escape to the outside atmosphere after the fuel vapor air mixture is passed through the EVAP canister, which is filled with activated carbon. As this mixture is passed through the layer of activated carbon, the fuel vapor is absorbed. The air portion of the mixture is allowed to escape to the atmosphere through the vent. That is how the EVAP canister absorbs fuel vapor. It's simply passed through activated carbon. However, the EVAP canister does not have unlimited storage. Let's take a look at how fuel vapor is purged from the EVAP canister. The EVAP canister has a vent line that runs to the EVAP canister purge regulator valve. From here, the fuel vapor is routed to the intake manifold and into the engine to be burned during normal combustion. The EVAP canister purge regulator valve is an electromagnetic solenoid valve that can be pulsed to allow a variable percentage of fuel vapor to enter the intake manifold. The ECM controls this valve. Based on information from the oxygen sensors about the fuel to air ratio in the exhaust, the ECM opens the EVAP purge regulator valve and allows vapor from the EVAP canister to be drawn into the intake manifold. As air is now drawn in through the EVAP vent, it is passed back through the activated carbon that holds the fuel vapor. The fuel vapor separates from the activated carbon and combines with the air. This fuel vapor air mixture is drawn through the vent line, through the EVAP purge regulator valve, and into the intake manifold. The EVAP purge regulator valve is modulated so that the right amount of fuel vapor is allowed to enter the intake manifold. The volume of air and fuel vapor entering the intake manifold from the EVAP canister can change how the engine runs. The ECM has to constantly monitor the mass airflow sensor and the oxygen sensors to determine the air to fuel ratio. A 1% concentration of fuel vapor from the EVAP canister can vary the air to fuel mixture by as much as 20%. As the ECM monitors the inputs from its sensors, it will either increase or decrease the signal to the EVAP canister purge regulator valve. This controls the purge rate for the best efficiency under all operating conditions. Well, that's all there is to the EVAP system. It is a sealed system that traps the fuel vapor created in the fuel tank. This vapor is routed through the breather bottle, rollover valve, and through the EVAP canister. The EVAP canister then sends the fuel vapor through the vent lines to the EVAP canister purge regulator valve. The ECM controls this valve and allows the fuel vapor to be burned in the engine. For 1998 and newer vehicles, Onboard Diagnostics 2 or OBD2 regulations require a system that checks the integrity of the EVAP system during every drive cycle. As a result, the leak detection pump or LDP was added to all Volkswagen vehicles. The leak detection pump is an integral part of the EVAP system. Its main function is to pressurize the EVAP system and check for a drop in pressure that would indicate a leak. In addition, it also functions as the EVAP canister vent on most vehicles. Before we get too deep into the LDP system operation, let's take a look at the components of the LDP and how they work together. The LDP is made up of a vacuum switch, a reed switch, 
a diaphragm, an inlet valve, an outlet valve, an upper and a lower pump chamber, an EVAP shutoff valve, and a spring. The LDP is a vacuum-driven ECM-controlled diaphragm pump. In order to operate, the engine must be running and vacuum applied to the vacuum switch. During every drive cycle, the ECM looks for certain conditions to be met before the leak detection process can be run. These conditions include, but are not limited to, engine coolant and intake air temperature. When all of the conditions are met, the ECM will command the LDP to operate. In order to pressurize the EVAP system, the vent for the EVAP canister must be sealed. Many vehicles use the EVAP shutoff valve at the bottom of the LDP as the EVAP vent. This valve closes whenever the LDP is operating. On vehicles where the LDP is located a distance away from the EVAP canister, a separate EVAP vent valve is used to seal the system. This is sometimes referred to as the condensate drain valve, which can be a misleading term. At the same time the ECM commands the LDP to operate, it also closes the EVAP canister purge regulator valve and the EVAP vent valve if applicable. Whenever the engine is running, vacuum is applied to the vacuum switch. This switch will apply vacuum to the upper chamber of the pump when it receives a ground signal from the ECM. This signal is a duty cycle pulse of approximately 40%. When vacuum is applied to the upper chamber, the diaphragm will be pulled up, compressing the spring above the diaphragm. At the same time the diaphragm is pulled up, air will be pulled in to fill the lower chamber through the one-way inlet valve. When the diaphragm begins to rise, the reed switch attached to the diaphragm rod will open. When the vacuum switch closes, the spring will push the diaphragm down. As the diaphragm is pushed down, the air in the lower chamber is pushed out of the one-way outlet valve into the EVAP system. This process continues until the pressure in the EVAP system will no longer allow the spring to push the diaphragm down. With tension on the diaphragm, the ECM will wait for a certain period of time and watch for the diaphragm to fall. The reed switch closing signals that the diaphragm has fallen to its lowest point. When the reed switch closes, the ECM may cycle the LDP to build up system pressure again. The ECM will measure the amount of time between when the LDP stops running and when the reed switch closes to determine if there is a leak in the system. Depending on the vehicle, the ECM can detect a leak of one millimeter in diameter or greater. The slower the diaphragm falls after the pump stops running, the less air is leaking out of the EVAP system. Unfortunately, the ECM cannot determine where a leak in the system is. We'll discuss finding the leak in the next module. In summary, the LDP is simply a pump used to pressurize the EVAP system to look for leaks. In addition, it can also function as the EVAP canister vent on most vehicles. When the ECM starts the LDP, the EVAP canister purge regulator valve and the EVAP vent valve, if applicable, are closed. The vacuum switch then applies vacuum to the upper chamber of the pump to pull the diaphragm up. When the ECM closes the vacuum circuit, the diaphragm will be pushed down by the spring. This sends air into the system for pressurization. The LDP cycles many times and then waits for the pressure to drop. Depending on the rate of pressure drop, the ECM will determine if a leak is present. Now that you know all about the EVAP system that incorporates the LDP, let's take a look at how to fix the system. Due to different EVAP system designs and part locations, it is not possible to show a single comprehensive test to you with this video. However, we will give you some guidelines. The procedures discussed in this section only apply to vehicles with an active leak detection system. Caution. Testing of the EVAP and ORVR systems can result in the escape of explosive fuel vapor. 
Do not smoke while testing the EVAP system and make sure the area you are working in is well ventilated. Most customer complaints involving the EVAP system will be that the mill light is on. Use the VAG 1551, 1552 or the VAS 5051 to read the diagnostic trouble code stored in memory. This DTC will tell you if there is a specific electrical failure in the system or if there is a malfunction such as a leak or EVAP system flow concern. A specific failure is easy to diagnose and repair. The testing procedures on all vehicles can be affected by the following. Incorrect engine temperature, incorrect air intake temperature, accessory drains, and many other factors. Make sure to check the service information system for other factors that may affect the vehicle you're working on. Make sure to turn off all of the accessories, including air conditioning, before running any tests on the vehicle. This will assure a correct diagnosis. When testing for an EVAP canister purge regulator valve malfunction, it is important to remember how the ECM monitors the function of this valve. The ECM uses the inputs from the mass airflow sensor and the oxygen sensors to determine if the flow from the EVAP canister purge regulator valve is correct. In order to test the system, use the EVAP canister purge regulator valve test from the readiness code setting procedure. In this case, basic settings group 070. The ECM will open the EVAP canister purge regulator valve and monitor the changes in the mass airflow signal and the oxygen sensor signals. As long as the ECM identifies a change in the oxygen sensor signal, the EVAP canister purge regulator valve will pass the test. However, if the air and fuel mixture coming from the EVAP canister purge regulator valve is 14.7 to 1, the correct range, there will be no effect on the oxygen sensor. The ECM will also look for a change in the signal from the mass airflow sensor. If there is no change in either the oxygen sensor signal or the mass airflow signal, the ECM will record a DTC for a malfunction or incorrect flow. You can find the specifications for these signals in the service information system under the readiness code setting procedures. When diagnosing EVAP system faults, remember that the ECM is checking for flow. It is possible that the EVAP canister purge regulator valve could be blocked or defective, yet not show a diagnostic trouble code for an electrical failure. The vent lines might be plugged or pinched. Check them thoroughly for damage or blockage. Also, check to make sure the EVAP canister, EVAP canister vent, and the EVAP canister vent valve are not plugged. Finally, run the system test several times especially if the DTC is sporadic. A single test may not be good enough to determine if the system is functioning correctly. Let's take a look at diagnosing an EVAP system leak through a diagnostic trouble code. In order to diagnose a leak, you must look in the service information system for the diagnostic procedures to test the EVAP system. The service information system will show you how to test the EVAP system for a leak using the LDP. As an example, let's say a vehicle came in with the mill on and the VAG 1551 identified a DTC for a large leak. The service information system first directs us to a specific measuring value block. In this case, 071, display zone 1. If the display zone reads open, it means pressure still exists in the EVAP system and is not allowing the LDP diaphragm to seat. The LDP cannot perform an accurate test when the diaphragm is not seated and the reed switch is not closed. In order to continue testing, this pressure must be released. Loosen the fuel cap to release the pressure in the EVAP system and check that the display zone 1 switches to closed. Tighten the fuel cap. Continue with the testing procedure by switching to basic settings. The ECM will run the LDP and check for leaks. If the system fails the test, the first thing you should check is the tightness of the fuel cap. If the fuel cap is loose, 
the LDP will be unable to pressurize the system and will set a DTC for a leak. If the fuel cap is loose, tighten it and retest the system. Also, check the seal on the fuel cap to make sure it is not defective. That can also cause pressure leaks. To ensure that the fuel cap is not defective, exchange it with another from a vehicle that does not have an EVAP system leak concern. Retesting the system will let you know if a different fuel cap has corrected the concern. If the tester still indicates a leak, the next step should be to check the operation of the LDP. Locate the LDP on the vehicle, then rerun the test. You will feel the LDP clicking if it's operating. If the pump does not run, check the vacuum supply to the pump. Remember that the LDP runs off of engine vacuum. Most vehicles will set a DTC if there's a problem with the vacuum supply. But this DTC can also be set if there is an internal problem in the pump. Most electrical problems with the LDP will set a separate diagnostic trouble code. If the LDP runs, the next step should be to pinch off the line from the LDP to the EVAP canister and run the test a couple of times. Leaking valves can cause intermittent faults that a single test may not catch. If the system fails the test at this point, the LDP is leaking internally and will need to be replaced. If the system passes the test, then the LDP is working properly and the leak is elsewhere in the system. On most systems, there is a display group that will show the leak downtime of the EVAP system when pressurized by the LDP. The acceptable leak downtime for the EVAP system is two seconds. If the EVAP system leak downtime is close to two seconds, run the test several times to make sure an intermittent fault is not present. Pinch off the line leading from the EVAP canister purge regulator valve and run the test to check for a leaking valve. If the system passes the test, replace the valve and retest. If the system fails the test, continue checking for the leak. Check the EVAP canister purge regulator valve and make sure it's installed correctly. If it has been installed backwards, the LDP will be unable to pressurize the EVAP system and will set a DTC. The service information system will lead you through a series of tests to isolate the leak in the EVAP system. This series will basically consist of pinching or plugging a certain area of the EVAP system and running the LDP test again. As you test different sections of the system, you will be able to isolate the area the leak is coming from. Remember, if a component such as the EVAP canister purge regulator valve or an EVAP canister vent valve has been isolated as the fault, make sure that component is receiving the correct electrical signal. Use the service information system to perform the correct electrical tests. Remember not to pinch hard lines. They will crack and create more work for you. Do not, under any circumstance, pressurize the system with an air hose. This can cause damage to many components in the EVAP system and also cause a vapor hazard to yourself and your fellow technicians. Remember, after you have repaired a fault in the EVAP system and everything checks out okay, reset the readiness code. That covers a few of the guidelines you can use to accurately test the EVAP system. Knowing how to test the system accurately will create less work for you and will maintain customer satisfaction. Remember, Testing of the EVAP and ORVR systems can result in the escape of explosive fuel vapor. Do not smoke while testing the EVAP system and make sure the area you are working in is well ventilated. As you can see, fixing the EVAP system is easy once you understand how the system operates. You can use the VAG 1551, 1552 or the VAS 5051 in conjunction with the service information system to diagnose a failure in the EVAP system. After that, all you have to do is repair or replace the faulty area and the vehicle is on its way. Starting in 1998, 
another system was developed to stop another type of vapor emissions, refueling vapor emissions. This type of fuel vapor recovery is called the Onboard Refueling Vapor Recovery, or ORVR system. To see how the ORVR system works, let's first take a look at the components in the system. Pressure holding valve, breather valve, rollover valve, filler neck, operating breather bottle, filler breather bottle, fuel tank, evap canister, evap canister vent, evap canister purge regulator valve. These components work together to trap the fuel vapor that would previously have escaped from the filler neck and routed to the evap canister. The ECM has no control over the components during the ORVR process. All activity through the system is mechanical. During normal operation, the ORVR system works the same as in previous systems. Fuel vapor is collected in both the operating breather bottle and the filler breather bottle, then routed through the breather valve. From the breather valve, the fuel vapor is passed to the rollover valve and onto the pressure holding valve. The pressure holding valve is located in the vent line between the fuel tank and the evap canister. It controls the amount of fuel tank pressure that can be passed from the fuel tank to the evap canister to control the amount of fuel vapor created. By keeping a small amount of pressure on the fuel in the fuel tank, fewer vapors are formed. When the pressure in the fuel tank becomes too high, the pressure holding valve will allow this pressure through to the evap canister. The pressure holding valve also allows air from the evap canister vent into the fuel tank. This relieves the vacuum created when fuel is drawn from the fuel tank by the engine. When the evap canister purge regulator valve is purging the evap system of fuel vapor, the pressure holding valve will close. This prevents fuel vapor from being drawn out of the tank. When the evap canister purge regulator valve closes, and the pressure in the vent lines rises, the pressure holding valve will reopen and allow vapor through to the evap canister. During refueling, the nozzle from the gas pump pushes aside the fuel tank filler flap, which in turn pushes on the breather valve. The breather valve closes the fuel tank venting path from the operating breather bottle. This traps air in the breather bottle and the top of the fuel tank to allow for expansion. At the same time, the larger vent line from the filler breather bottle is opened. As fuel flows down the filler neck and into the tank, either a liquid or mechanical seal will keep fuel vapor from passing out through the top of the filler neck. A liquid seal uses the design of the filler neck to stop fuel vapor from escaping. As fuel flows through this filler neck, a venturi effect is created drawing the fuel vapor into the fuel tank. A mechanical seal uses physical contact to stop fuel vapor from escaping. Notice the rubber O-ring. This O-ring seals around the filler nozzle to stop the fuel vapors from escaping. The fuel vapor will now be forced into the fuel tank, through the fuel tank vent line, through the filler breather bottle, into the large vent line, and finally through to the evap canister. The EVAP canister functions the same way during ORVR operation as it does during EVAP operation. As the fuel vapor and air mixture is passed through the EVAP canister, it passes through a layer of activated carbon. This carbon absorbs the fuel vapor from the air mixture, only letting clean air escape out of the LDP or the EVAP canister vent valve, whichever the system is equipped with. Once the fuel tank fills, Liquid fuel will travel through the lower fuel tank vent line to the filler breather bottle. When the filler breather bottle is full of fuel, a float valve at the top will close. This prevents liquid fuel from traveling to the evap canister. The increased tank pressure caused by the float valve closing causes liquid fuel to back up in the filler neck, covering the aspirator on the gas pump nozzle. This shuts off the gas pump. When the gas pump nozzle is removed, 
the breather valve switches back to its normal operating position. This closes the large vent line and opens the vent at the top of the operating breather bottle. The air in the operating breather bottle is released and now the fuel in the filler breather bottle will flow back into the fuel tank. Both tanks are left empty for expansion. That covers the ORVR system. During normal operation, it pretty much acts like the EVAP system, but uses some different components. The fuel vapor is recovered from the fuel tank and the EVAP canister, sent through the EVAP canister purge regulator valve and burned in the engine. During the refueling process, the vapor is routed through breather bottles, the pressure holding valve, and to the EVAP canister. As you can see, the ORVR system is a great way to keep the excess fuel vapor from escaping into the environment. This video has presented the EVAP and ORVR systems. The EVAP system started out to keep the fuel vapor in the fuel tank from escaping. This system later added an LDP to pressurize and check for leaks. The LDP is vacuum operated, ECM controlled, and can detect a leak over one millimeter in diameter. Now that the LDP was added, the technician had to be given information on how to repair the system. Using scan tools, the service information system, and the LDP as a pump, the technician has the capability to find any leak in the system. The ORVR system was added to vehicles after the EVAP system and has the capability to trap the vapor created during the refueling process. This vapor is later routed to the engine in a similar manner to the EVAP system to be burned. Remember to always check the service information system for the latest information about the vehicle you are working on. Feedback or questions? Visit our online tech forums or our online technical library at bentleypublishers.com.